Hey, our next show will have Kristen Dubord from Skowhegan Savings, one of our sponsors of our show. And on this show, she will talk about banking and how you might want to start your accounts with Skowhegan Savings Bank and manage your money properly. You know, our mission statement is to make our communities a, pl a better place to live and work. Um, and this is at the foundation of it, making each of us successful as individuals to make us successful as a community is where our future is going to be. This program is brought to you in part by the generous support of these sponsors. Skowhegan Savings Bank. Franklin Community Health Network. The Rotary Club of Farmington. And community members like you. Thank you. Welcome to Talking Maine. This is Thomas Aviello. Welcome to our show. And I have my banker here. Thank you, you Tom. Are. I am Kristen Dubord with Skowhegan Savings Bank. Kristen, welcome to the show. I appreciate you coming on. First of all, let me thank you for your support for the station. I mean, it's great that we approached you and you said, great. I think that's what more banks should do is support local businesses like this. And Absolutely. Oh, it's my, been our pleasure, and this is a fundamental station to keep us connected locally. So thanks it for us asking. And, and, and I thought it would be a good idea to have, because, you know, in banking or uh, that's out there, that no kid is taught how to bank. I mean, I learned a little bit when I was younger, and we'll go to that in a minute. And then as I got older, I didn't take care of my finances in the house. And then all of a sudden, I was stuck with taking care of them. It's like, Oh, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. uh, even when I was a Boy Scout, I was a treasurer and I bounced my first check. <laughs> so it's like, okay. So I thought what we do is just kind of start this as a, um, as a young person, not, not anymore, but when I was a young person, I made my first paycheck. I worked 40 hours a week and I got paid $35. And <clears throat> my parents took me to the bank. So if I were a young person and I got my first paycheck and I wanted to start something with my local bank, what would I do if I came into Skowhegan Savings? How would you guide me? Yep. And then we can build on that. Great. Wonderful question. And financial literacy is so crucial for our youth development. And as you said, it's really a missing ele element of our basic education at this point in time. So if we were to have somebody come into the bank, our first recommendation would be, um, and, you know, for, at, from 16 years old um, through 18, you can open a bank account with a parent's signature. So bring in a parent and open a checking and a savings account to go with it. We have youth-specific checking and savings accounts that have a $1 minimum. Oh, wow. uh, so really low fees on the savings account, $25 are going to start earning you money on that savings account. And so it's a wonderful way to start putting your, getting your established with a community bank, which is so crucial. Um, and I say it's crucial for a community bank because you can come into your, this local bank, you're going to see your uh, parents of your friends, you know, faces that you know that are going to guide you through this process. If you get confused on your checking account and you uh, something is amiss, you, you walk in and you talk to your community banker about it and your personal bankers and they guide you through the process. Um, but it's such a wonderful place to start is you get that first pay stub, set it up for direct deposit and have it come, part of it coming mostly into your checking, but also it's so crucial to set up 10 to 30 percent of those pay stubs, even as a, as a youth, to go into your savings and set it aside. Don't pay attention to it, just let it work for you. And as I said, when it gets to $25, it's gonna start saving, earning money, and leave that in there. And as you go through and continue to, to pay, you're learning to manage your, your money in that checking account, and you're learning the crucial element of savings in that savings account. As it develops, you may get up to $500, and you can take that and move that into a small certificate of deposit and really start seeing increase the high interest earnings on that. And by the time you're, you know, if you start this at 16, by the time you're 18 years old, there's a good chance that savings is going to have your down payment for your first car. And you, you know, during that time, you can get a secured credit card um, with, the, with any bank. Um, secured credit cards work. You know, if you were to come in and give us $200, we're going to give you a credit card for $200, and you can learn about charging to that card and repaying that so card. So that card would be a fixed amount. It wouldn't be an open-ended amount. So That's on correct. my first credit card, I can't go crazy out there with it. I can go buy up to $200 because it's already prepaid for, but I know how to manage that card. I know how to track that card. Mm -hmm. 
I know how much money I have left on that card. Mm -hmm. The only thing I do with those cards is I forget that I got those cards because they're still in my wallet with the dollar <laughs> sign written on it because I cut a card as I do that. Yeah. No, I, I should, so let's take a step back though. Tell me a little bit about your background. I mean, I know who you are because you and I have worked together, but tell me a little about your background. Yeah, you know, like a lot of people that live rurally and locally, I've had a rather eclectic career. Um, I'm proud to be a UMF graduate um, from 1998, and I came out of UMF with a really strong science research background, a uh, science degree, geochem, which was really valuable, and I immediately went into sales. Uh, my father ran a real estate company out of a little... So geochem. Yep. Yeah. To real estate. To real estate, okay. yep. Right. Uh, but the reason for that is my father was running a long-standing real estate company out of Livermore Falls. He'd been in business as a sole proprietor since 1954, and he was looking at retirement. And I couldn't stand the idea of a small, independent business like that that had been flourishing for so many years closing. And so at the, I, I said, thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to reconnect with my community. I'd been away at college for a few years before coming back to finish. And so I joined my father and ultimately my husband as well. And we worked alongside my father until his death in 2007. Who was your dad? Lionel Dubord. Lionel, yeah. Yeah, du uh, Lionel Dubord Realty out of Livermore Falls. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so it's, I've been indirectly related to you know this for years. Real estate is really in my blood. He had us all start working at 10 years old. So by the time I was 10, I worked Saturdays in the office. Um, and that has really led to a, a life of understanding how, you know, what the importance of working, the value of working and watching somebody, you know, he knew the value of his name on that sign and what we, he had to do locally to be a strong community member and to support his customers. And I really take the lessons I learned from his work ethic and impact and you know utilize those in my day to day. I like to think I tell everybody that I work with, whether it's on the basic banking level or my lending customers, that availability is really what I pride myself on um, with them and, and being accessible and candid and honest at all times. Um, and I thank him for that, and I thank Skowhegan Savings for really continuing to foster that level of mentality and how we do business as a bank. Because um, Skowhegan Savings is a, is a mutual bank, which means we're not governed by um, shareholders. And so at the end of the year, our profits don't have to be paid out in dividends to our shareholders. We reinvest that money back into our communities that we serve. And it goes such a long way to keeping our com rural communities thriving and vibrant. So can you kind of explain that difference too? Because I don't, I don't even really understand. You got credit unions, you got mutual community banks, and you got big banks. It, exactly. Oh, I, I, I do have, how much did your dad pay you? Uh, Nothing. Education. He oh. paid me an education and work ethic. <laughs> well, so, so we were kind of in the same boat. My first job, my first $35 check came from my uncle, my mm -hmm. uncle Hugo, who had a landscape business. Yep. And at 12 years old, I started working for, for ice cream money because I would pull hoses around when he was spraying for bugs and other things. Mm -hmm. And that was my ice cream money. So at the end of the day, after I, I worked a couple hours with him, I got a buck and the ice cream man came around, I could spend it. <laughs> then eventually he hired me to work summers and he used to say okay Tuesdays and Saturdays are your two days to work because I got men that will work the rest of the week by the time the summer was half over all those men quit because it was hard work I couldn't <laughs> quit because I was a family member and I got my $35 check yeah so anyway so explain the difference on, on the, the different types of banks that are out there because that gets confusing too it can and I'm not an expert on this so so forgive me on that but um, as I'm better I than I am yeah. me, so. <laughs> uh, so we report to our board of directors um, and so they help to make our decisions and it keeps all of our money stays within Skowhegan savings in our communities um, outside of that banks that are governed by shareholders may have to share the profits at the end of the year, not reinvesting them into their communities or went into their own independent workforce development inside the company, but to outside shareholders that have stock in the bank and, and require some of that dividends be paid out. Again, nothing I'm really fluent in, but it allows us to, to continue to keep our money where we want it to be, to focus on keeping our communities um, as viable as they can be moving ahead. Because, yeah. you yeah. know, rural communities are in a difficult spot. Um, we don't have the resources that we once had. We have to really be creative. Yeah, 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 yeah. be creative. Uh, yep. And, and, and you, Scott Higgins Savings has been so super, not only with the station, but you know, I see you at the Mount Blueberry Festival Parade. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, if you're going to be successful in the community, you have to be part of the community. You can't be aloof to it. You got to be part of it. So you guys are participating in all of those different things. And yep. 
as I said, participating with the station. That's great. You know, last year alone, we put, uh, Skowhegan Savings put about $115,000 in donations into the Franklin County specifically, um, much greater than that, about $400,000. And in this most recent year, we announced a $1 million workforce foundation grant. So for the next five years, we're going to be working with local biz business leaders, government agencies, nonprofits um, to focus on technical workforce development as it's needed in our rural communities. And that's going to be a huge opportunity to help, you know, as every business, ourselves included, are struggling with maintaining in a critical workforce. Yes. Um, and we have to do something different to encourage and, and stimulate that um, to continue moving ahead. And Skowhegan's positioned themselves beautifully to, to help our communities really yeah, flourish. Some of the, I'm getting off the subject, but this yeah. is great. This is very helpful because I think people <laughs> should know this. Will that be through like the high school or will that be continuing education, adult education? How do you see that? A little bit of, of all of that, really. Um, it, with nonprofits that are going to have grants for workforce development, um, particularly, you know, f the foster tech maybe element, you know, I, I'm not sure how it's going to shake out. Um, it's a, a, a grant based program, as I understand it, um, but a, a lot of opportunity to just focus on that workforce development, particularly in the trades, which is so crucial. Absolutely. I mean, we, we are so fortunate here with Foster Tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a jewel that sits there and they're so entrepreneurial, meaning they can flex what they need to be. So if we need welding in the area, and I remember back when I first started, we need welders. They mm -hmm. created, Rob Olson created the welding program. We still have guys that go all over the place with their, their fiber tech stuff, the plant, I call it, yeah. whatever they develop, the composite program. They're hired and they're hired at, at you know, eighty to $90,000 a year out of mm -hmm. high school. And yeah. So we have a wonderful thing, and to see that kind of investment being made into that is super. Yeah. And, you know, another element of that to think about in terms of the financial wellness is those trade schools are so much more affordable. You know, shorter term, they get a quicker return on your on your profession uh, and getting you into that workforce. And, you know, one thing that I see a lot in, the, in my lending world is, is student loans. It's a huge discussion yeah. right now. Um, so as a part of that financial wellness for those, you know, that 16 or to 18 year old coming in to talk to us about our first, their first checking account is also, you know, looking at what your college options are going to be as a four year college your best option or is it that trade school, you know? And when you look at those four years, look at your top schools and, and look, at, look at what the cost per year is going to be and think about your future and what you want your repayment structure to be on that. And that's something that not a lot of people have done over the years. You know, uh, student loans are difficult because they'll give you more money a lot of times than what you need. Yes. And, and, and historically, those funds haven't been consumed in the best way. You know, they've funded spring break. Yeah. Um, yep. And now, you know, 20 and 30 years later, people are still paying on those loans. And that is not a return on your investment. <laughs> no, I was fortunate in my case, but when I went to the University of Tennessee, it was actually no cheaper for me to go there than it was to go in New Jersey to the state school at Rutgers and got a great education that was there. And what helped my parents, my brother went to the Naval Academy, so they didn't have to pay for his education. Yeah. And then I was able to use the equity in my house to take care of my kids when nice. they went through. But that's because I learned how to manage my money. Mm -hmm. As I told you, I wasn't very good at it in the beginning, right. but it was better than that. Um, so that's really interesting to, to listen to all that because it's it's it, people don't they borrow and they have fun with it. That's and then right. All of a sudden, when they when the when they kind of pay, it's like, oh, what did I do with that money? Well, it was supposed to be for your education, mm -hmm. and you decided to spend it on something else. Yeah. But that's another story. So that's go right. back to the, the kid now. Yeah. I come in. I've opened my savings account. So uh, I can get the credit card, mm -hmm. but it's not a credit card per se. That's what, one you can't get in trouble with. You can't get in trouble. That's really neat because mm -hmm. that's a great way for a child or a young person to mm -hmm. learn how to use a credit card. That's right. And it's so crucial because it's, having credit isn't about carrying debt. It's about learning to manage credit for, so that you build your success moving ahead. And it's interesting because a lot, and I see, you know, a lot of young adults will come in and sit down and say, you know, I don't want to be straddled with debt. And so I haven't opened any credit cards And that. I appreciate that mentality, but it's not a mentality that you need to move ahead to be successful in today's society, because whether we like it or not, our society is based upon the idea of credit, good credit. And being able to pay it back. Exactly. Yeah, that expectation and ability to repay. So, you know, for, for these kids, um, you know, I'll sit down and, and, and talk to them about being, you know, thinking about that long-term benefit of, 
of credit in. Yes, you need a credit card, but you don't have to use that credit card. It's about establishing what everybody's going to need to buy their first house or three open and active trade lines on their credit report. And it's about establishing those as early as possible. That can happen um, for a young child by a parent adding them as an authorized user to a credit card, and that's going to put their first trade line on there. And you can have those trade lines and have those credit cards, but not abuse them. And that's the trick that we want to teach them. Put a small amount on there your first month and pay that off at the end of the month. Let it sit for a couple of months, don't use it, but learn to use it in a responsible way so that you're not, you're paying, target your high interest debt first, pay that off every month and don't carry that balance over. And they're going to see very quickly the value of that return um, and what it means. And as they're doing that, to watch that secret savings over there sneaking up a little bit while they're managing their money correctly. Um, you know, by the time they get through college, if they maintain, that, that savings pattern, they're going to be in such a better shape. And I, I have so many young adults now that are focused on savings in a way that I haven't seen historically, and they're coming in at 25 years old with savings that I'm not seeing you know, for people twice their age. And it's really remarkable. So there is a young mindset right now to save, but we need to couple that with understanding what credit is and the importance of having it. Does a person get the same credit evaluation if they have a card like you've given them with $200 on it and they use it appropriately? Will that help their credit score? So that they, even though it's not a credit card where they put an open-ended amount mm -hmm. on it, that absolutely will, because it's all about your, your repayment. Um, credit is about repaying on a positive structure, your capacity um, to do so and your you know, consistency in doing so. That's, that's all, it's all a stepping stone to continuing to build your credit. You know, as you, as the, you know, somebody moves beyond that uh, secured credit card, they may think about getting a credit card that has a rewards-based program and learning to use that responsibly. And, you, you know, if you do so correctly and you have some rewards at the end, that's a great opportunity for you to, you know, treat yourself a little bit and, and utilize those rewards because you have utilized that credit management correctly. Um, and so that, you know, might be my next step from that secured credit card is getting your own credit card that doesn't have a limitation of the bank or maybe doesn't have a cosigner with your folks and you've established yourself in a and pattern. credit card most likely is going to have a limit on it, say of $1,000. I can mm -hmm. remember having in my bank in Massachusetts before I transferred everything up is so I had a thousand dollars in it and I got an email that said they was I was eligible for a credit card. So I went down to the bank and I said I'd like my credit card and they kinda of looked at me, We're not giving you a credit card. I said, but you just sent me this letter. He <laughs> said, I yep. got it and I never used it. Mm. But then someone said you need to establish some credit. So I would charge like one gas on it. So I didn't have a big bill that I had to pay. It's perfect. And then with my kids I told them they need to establish credit. So when they both both bought their first cars and they had saved enough to really pay for it. I said, no, pay a really substantial down payment, but take a loan on the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So that you now have credit established for paying that off. That'll yeah. help you in the long run. Absolutely. And that's what they both did. Great. And that's a great lead in because, you know, we, that first car is going to be pretty important. And chances are you're going to have to have your parents co-sign on that first loan because you may have that secured credit card, but that's simply not enough for most financial institutes. So plan on having your parents sign co-sign for that first loan. But then immediately, you know, we're, we're at our second trade line already. We're establishing that building. We're con your credit score is growing with that second loan and that long term repayment structure. So it's the next step in the stepping stone. Yes, it's debt, but it's debt that e that individual or that child needs to continue to move ahead and progress. So, so what are the three? There's, so, so there's like a credit card would be one. Yep. A loan would be a second one. Or, yes. And then what would be the third one? Well, uh, you know, uh, that would show up on the credit report. I always look. My I always yeah. get a note. My FICO or whatever this is, yes. is changed. Yeah. Well, changed from what? You know, it's because I'm lucky. It winds up around eight hundred, and that's you can't go much farther than that. Yeah. I pay my bills. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Yeah, and you know, um, it's I love to see those those not high eight hundreds. That should be the goal. Um, but you know, one good thing might be to at the bank uh, you can sign up for ODP overdraft protection, and that is a, a trade line that could be on there, and that allows you. you ideally, you'd never use that, but if you do go over your balance, you know, in your checking account, it allows you to utilize um, reserve funds that aren't there, and so that could be a good one. Um, or you know, additional okay. credit card, or you know, a secure unsecured loan may be an option as well. And that's that next step that um, beyond the secured loan, where there is not you know collateral given in exchange for it. It's interesting because a young man that I know in this area wanted to be a state trooper, and he'd gone through all his stuff. And I get a phone call that they won't approve him. And I said, <laughs> and this other friend of mine were trying to help him get it to be that. And I said, why? 
because he had no credit established. He had never borrowed any money. Mm -hmm. So we had to call him up and say, go borrow some money. Go borrow, do something. So yeah. you've got a credit score. Because that's what they're knocking you down. You, you're, that's one of their criteria for you becoming yep. a, a candidate, excuse me, to go to, to, to uh, the state police school. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of people are really surprised by that. You know, Skahegan Savings Bank and a lot of other community banks are fortunate that when we do run into individuals in that situation, at times we can use what we call non-traditional credit. Um, you know, if that person is making uh, automobile insurance payments mo on a monthly basis and can show that they've done so for 12 months, we may be able to fall back on that or a, a cell phone plan for 12 months. And so we can look at those things, but the consequences are usually a significant interest rate hike. Um, so having that established credit is really going to be the difference between, you know, in, in this, this conversation could be a difference of a, a percentage point or not, which can be substantial on a loan. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if it's a lot of money, it could be very substantial. Absolutely. So now is my, my, I buy my car. How, how do I really start working towards saving towards my house? Because those, that's really it unbelievable right now. It is. And that's so, so important. You know, there are great programs out there to help um, first time home buyers. Um, but you, you don't want to rely on those because, you know, your cash on hand is going to be your success in the amount of getting the house that you want versus not the house that you can afford. So continuing to set up direct deposit and having that structured savings plan and, and staying committed to it. Um, one thing I haven't touched on but is so important is monitoring the credit that you're using. Not only utilizing those credit card, that credit card, but monitoring your statements and making sure, you know, fraud is a huge element of our society right now. So monitoring your bank statements, monitoring your credit card statements, check your, utilize the online banking resources to make sure that you are the only one out there utilizing your credit. Um, and like you mentioned before, you know, when you have those credit cards, they offer some really nice credit monitoring services for free. Um, I, most of those are really high quality and give you a snapshot of what you're looking at and give you alerts if there's a large balance or, you know, you're going to be late in your payment. And those are going to help you in, yeah, in your key to your success. Credit. I mean, I can remember taking my credit card statement, which I check over, and all of a sudden there was a $2,000 charge. <laughs> and it was to some place in Kansas. And so I called the credit card union, credit card people up. I said, what's this charge for? And they looked into it and they got back to me and said, well, you must have bought tickets of some kind. I didn't buy any tickets, so I called my kids up. They hadn't bought any mm. tickets. Somebody had used my card to buy tickets, yep. and so I got the credit. But the, I look at it all the time to try to figure out. The hardest part now on some of those things is that if you subscribe to, like, Netflix, it's not necessarily, well, Netflix is different because it does show up as Netflix, mm -hmm. but some of them show up as something else. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting and saying, what did I do there? So you call up and go, oh, that's what they call it. It's not Netflix, it's Apple. And it's like, okay, fine, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, but that's such a crucial step is to question that and not have complacency because that can be very different, very dangerous. And, you know, the consequences can be much more than just losing money, um, you know, as far as losing your identity. So something to really pay attention with and it needs to be a part of this conversation about developing credit is monitoring it as equally. So as a young person, what would I do to protect myself? That's that's the scary part to me. Out there. Yep. I mean, I've never had it happen to me, fortunately. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I take that back. And one of my uh, local store here, uh, big department store, Walmart. I got a charge, and I'm saying I didn't buy anything, and found out my card, had, my account had been used in Presque Isle. Oh. I said that's not me. So we had to change everything. But as a young person, mm -hmm. how would I protect myself? Yeah. Well, in addition to the monitoring as often as you can, I really advocate for locking your credit with the credit bureaus. Um, and you go in and you, you can do it online or call them. And what it does is it makes your credit inaccessible to be accessed by anybody without your permission. So your credit can't be pulled. And that helps to preserve your credit scores. Because, of course, you know, the more credit inquiries you have during the course of a year, if you have three or more, that's going to start to impact your credit and have it go back down. So you really want to be conscious about having your credit pulled and protecting it as much as you can. So take that simple step of locking your credit. And then you ha it's not easy. You know, you can't. You're at a, a store, Kohl's is offering you this great deal. You can't do it even if you want to. At that point, you have to take that step to unlock your credit. And that's a great second step of, was it worth it? Did I want it? Did I need it? Did I have to have it? Uh, yeah. I was just going to say, that I locked my credit, but I locked it way too low. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, I'm in with my credit card, and it's, in, and it's like for $28. And I said, what do you mean it's not good? Well, I'd locked the credit at 25 ah. and unintentionally, because they probably asked me, sure, 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 did it. Yeah. And so it's like, wait a minute. And I call up, and they said, well, you locked your credit. So now I get an email, though. Mm -hmm. Instead of locking my credit, I've asked them to send me an email if it exceeds a certain amount. So yeah. I know, and I say, okay, I did buy that, or no, I didn't. Yeah, and that's a great thing to do. You 
you know, our community, Skyhegan Savings and most community banks offer that same level of service. You know, we, um, we're going to send you low balance alerts. We're going to, you know, if you have something out of the ordinary happening on your account, chances are one of us from the bank is going to call you personally and say, hey, you know, this looks a little unusual. Let's talk about it. And that's just having that level of support at a community bank really goes a long way to helping that preserve your credit and your financial future as well. We're partnering with our customers, you know, in that way. You also now have all these online checking things like Vimo and other things, and, and people need to recognize their limits in that. Because That's right. We had something listed from our store to be sold, and somebody wanted Christine to transfer a whole bunch of money to Vimo and then transfer back. Mm -hmm. And when we found out about it, we found out you can't do that, but you had to be really careful because if you don't know, you might actually make that. Absolutely, yeah. And they're so people are very creative in, in ways that they can be deceptive in procuring money from people right now. So you really have to question things like that and think about if that's the best way to go about it. Is that protecting your financial security? Can you guarantee that that's a safe and secure transaction? Um, you know, and again, you can come into your community bank and say, I'm in this position. This, these people are asking me to do this with my money. And that's a great conversation to have with your community bank, whether if, it, if it's a safe and secure move or not. Wow. Yeah. So uh, if I invest all my money with you, I'll be a millionaire before it's over, right? Ideally, yes. Yeah, with, with exceptional credit, the lowest interest rate out there, and managing your debt in a way that's building your future. <laughs> that's great. I mean, this is wonderful. I mean, it's, you know, people don't understand what the bank is, and this helps a lot, I think, to let us know that you're there to help us out. Absolutely. Uh, and it's really important. It's the basis of what we're doing. You know, our mission statement is to make our communities a, pl a better place to live and work. Um, and this is at the foundation of it, making each of us successful as individuals to make us successful as a community is where our future is going to be. Great. This is great. I, I even learned something today. Good. I think my credit is okay. You guys loan me money, so it must have been okay. That's right. <laughs> yep. You've, you're a great example of, you know, an accomplished local businessman with exceptional credit. And it's a, you know, uh -oh. kind of a, a, a goal for me, our youth. In the last 25 years, I learned. Yeah. And I'm 74, so it took me 50 years before I woke up to say, oh, yeah. I better not bounce. Like I told you in the beginning, when I was at the uh, uh, treasurer for the Explorer Scouts, yeah. I bounced my first check. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of like, oh, I better do it was only for 10 bucks, but I bounced my first check. So. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that's an important part of this conversation. You're going to make mistakes. I, I destroyed my credit at 18 years old over an $80 JCPenney's card. Not worth it. Um, you know, we've all made mistakes, but you can rebound. Um, I'm, I take a lot of pride in having very exceptional credit right now. It wasn't always that case. I had to work for it. I had to learn how to do it correctly. I had to acknowledge and take responsibility for the mistakes that I made and know that I'm not going to do them again. And so, you know, don't, you, we can't beat ourselves up for those mistakes. We just learn from them and move ahead. Perfect way to end the story. Beautiful. Thank you very much for coming on. And thank, thank you. you again for sponsoring our station. Oh, it's our, our pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. We'll see you next time. Go see Kirsten. She'll help you manage your money if you need to. We'll see Ed Scout. He can save his money. We'll see you next time. <laughs>